What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is the top 10 historical facts that aren't true. Hmm, interesting. No clue which facts we're talking about <laughs> and no clue whether they actually are true or not. Mm -hmm. This video is hopefully going to confirm it. Yeah. If you've got any questions about it, if you disagree, please let us know in the comments. We do read them and new legends do update us, but we may as well ask for it. Yeah, we may as well. Smash that like button guys, smash that subscribe button. Um, are you ready? I'm ready. I wonder if this is going to be game changers or not. Maybe. Let's see what we got. Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're looking at the top 10 historical facts that aren't actually true. Number 10. Columbus was the first European to discover America. I'd heard that. While this old belief has been largely expunged from the historical record today, at one point it was believed as a fact by generations of schoolchildren and is still maintained as true by some adults even today. Of course, the truth is that the Vikings preceded Columbus by centuries and may have even built small villages in the New World hundreds of years before Columbus was born. Even if that weren't the case, however, from a purely technical perspective, Columbus never actually touched foot onto what is today oh, wow. the United mm. States, spending all of his time in the East Indies. Number 9. People in Columbus's time thought that the world was flat. <laughs> Closely related Some people in our time Some people still do. think the world is flat. Don't be one of them people. Actually, you know what? If you're watching this video and you're one of them people, just be happy. Mm, I don't be happy. Yeah, just it's be happy. Fine. That's the main thing. Um, I, always thought, I always thought Columbus was the first European. Obviously, mm. you got Native Americans, but European-wise, but there you go. Mm. Never really thought too much about it, to be fair. Interesting. Related <laughs> to the belief that Columbus discovered America is the belief, again, less prevalent today than it was half a century ago, that most people in his day <sighs> believed the Earth was flat, and if Columbus sailed too far out, he would fall off its edge. In reality, the notion that the Earth was flat had been refuted by the ancient Greeks, who were even able to calculate its circumference with astonishing precision, and so was not held to be a fact by any but the most primitive cultures at the time. It's mental have a could do Number that eight, with no technology. Hitler seized power in Germany by force. Many people hold the misconception that the Nazis seized power in Germany, but nothing could be further from the truth. The fact is that the Nazis came to power through free and fair elections, and even used the democratic process to secure that power. In effect, Adolf Hitler, appealing to the very legitimate grievances and fears of the German people, used the ballot box to achieve the powerful position of chancellor, and then used that very same process to destroy democracy by having the legislature grant him the emergency powers he convinced them was necessary to restore order. Yeah. Number seven. And if you want to learn more about that, we did a reaction on Hitler, didn't mm -hmm. we? It is on the channel. Search it. The Beezes. Hit the reaction. Why don't you go and check it out? It teaches you that and more. Wow. It does. Yeah. I actually really enjoyed that video. It was interesting. That's really why I was bringing it up. But uh, the stock market, market crash of 1929, start of the Great Depression. Hmm. Never thought about it, to be fair. Nope. I know about the stock market crash. I know about the Great Depression. Never put them two and two together. There you go. Actually, may, I may have done. I, you know, remember. I think I might have. <laughs> started the Great Depression. Of all the misconceptions surrounding that dark era in American history, the idea that the crash of October 1929 kicked off the Great Depression is the most obstinate. The fact is that the Great Depression was caused by a number of factors, each of which went into making it a deeper and more enduring economic downturn than it would have been otherwise. Instead of letting the market make its own corrections and wait it out, they passed legislation, such as the Smoot-Hawley Act, that raised tariffs on imports, which was designed to make it cheaper to buy American products. The problem is, they didn't anticipate that foreign governments would raise tariffs on American goods in response, thereby killing exports and forcing the mass closure of many factories. Oh, wow. Bad government policies also caused many banks to fail, wiping out the life savings of millions of Americans, which further exacerbated the problem. That's Number insane, six, Japan had to attack America if it wanted to survive economically. The belief that Japan was largely forced into attacking the United States because of the crippling embargo oh, America had imposed upon just it stupid. in response to its aggression in China is debatable. Japan had two options available to her other than attacking the Pacific fleet at Pearl Harbor. 
First, it could have negotiated an end to her four-year-long war with China, which Japan was unwilling to do, or it could have simply seized the oil and mineral riches of the Dutch East Indies, modern-day Indonesia, and the Malay Peninsula directly without involving America at all. Consider for a moment that if the US was unwilling to go to war in Europe to assist Great Britain in its struggle with Nazi Germany, what were the chances Congress could have been persuaded to take on the Japanese over the Dutch East Indies? in Malaysia. Number 5. If Lee had won at Gettysburg, the South would have won the Civil War. It is widely believed that the Union victory at Gettysburg in July of 1863 prevented the North from complete collapse, but a careful look at the overall strategic situation at the time demonstrates this to have been unlikely. First, even if Lee had routed Meade's army at Gettysburg, they would have come at considerable cost, especially considering the number of Union troops Lee faced, over 90,000 compared to his own 70,000 men. This means that even if he had been victorious, Lee would have emerged from the battle with a largely exhausted and depleted force left with which to march on Washington almost 100 miles away. Additionally, Gettysburg would have been only the first in a string of obstacles he would have had to overcome as he moved east. Eventually, he would have to retreat back into Virginia in any case, and though he could add another Confederate victory to the long list of victories Lee had enjoyed up to that point in the war, the South simply couldn't match the North's almost unlimited industrial capability and was doomed to eventually lose in any case. Number four. Let's see your opinions on that. I don't think it would have been a straight, if it went that battle, it would have been war. Mm. So I, remember, I don't know if you remember when we did the Civil War, we actually, Gettysburg was the yeah. big battle. Unfortunately, there were so many casualties yeah. as well. But it was a, a game changer, mm -hmm. wasn't it? I mean, obviously you had the Lincoln speech, didn't you? Yeah. Um, at Gettysburg address. I don't think they'd have won the war if they'd have won that battle, but it made it a lot easier for myself to win it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I get what you mean. Obviously, it's still going to be hard, but yeah. let us know what you thought in the comments. Because that's not really... Saying it's not true, it's giving an opinion on what he yes, thinks, you know? Because yeah. we have no clue what's true because we don't mm. know what would have happened. No. Let us know what you think. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a weird one, that one. Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves. Most students grow up believing that the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves, but it did no such thing. First of all, it only applied to slaves living within the Confederate States, and since the North had no power to enforce the proclamation in those territories not under its direct control, it really had no immediate effect on freeing anyone. In fact, they didn't even free those slaves in the Northern States, where slave ownership, while uncommon, was still legal. It was only illegal to buy and sell slaves in the North, not own them. It would take the 13th Amendment, ratified in 1865, to do that, and it applied throughout the country, not just parts of it. Number three, Lindbergh was the first person to fly across the Atlantic. While so no Lucky clue. Lindsay won fame and fortune for his daring solo jaunt across the Atlantic in 1927, he was far from the first to cross the ocean by air. In fact, two British pilots, Alcock and Brown, had made the crossing years earlier in a repurposed RAF bomber. They flew from St. John's, Newfoundland to Galway, Ireland in just hours. under 16 hours wow. in 1919. That flight paved the way for commercial transatlantic aviation and made Lindbergh's future flight possible. Further, just a couple of weeks after the British duo had made their flight, the British airship R-34, with a couple of dozen crew and passengers on board, made a double crossing, taking about four days to cross both ways. Oh, in fact, geez. by the time Lindbergh made his world-famous crossing, close to 80 men had already made the epic journey. His, however, was done entirely solo, and clocking in at almost 34 hours of straight flying time was a far more challenging and grueling feat. Yeah, I can say, Number 34 two. hours straight on your own. That's quite incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it's not fun, though. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I imagine not fun. We can't even do, like, a free fire drive, can we? <laughs> we can't. <laughs> Custer's 7th Cavalry was wiped out at Little Bighorn. While many assume that Custer's entire command was wiped out at the Battle of Little Bighorn in June of 1876, the truth is that less than half of the 647 men under his command were killed in the famous battle. The reason for this was twofold. 
First, some of his men were assigned to drive and guard the lengthy wagon train that followed in the army's wake, and so were too far away at the time to be involved. And secondly, Custer had divided his command between himself and Major Reno in an effort to make a two-pronged attack. Reno's assault, which preceded Custer's by an hour or so, was driven off with heavy casualties, but most of it emerged from the battle intact. It was only those companies that rode with Custer, about 210 men in all, that were entirely wiped out. Okay. Number one, the USA was chiefly responsible for defeating Germany in World War I and World War II. Well, I mean, that's a pretty bold statement, isn't it? Mm. That you definitely helped and you probably had 99%. Mm. But you can't be chiefly the reason when you've got so many countries helping out. Yeah. But let's be truthful, 99% mm. were you guys. <laughs> 99%. <laughs> While American material and military support was imperative and likely ensured an eventual Allied victory, it was others who bore the brunt of the fighting against Germany in both wars. In World War I, the US was late to the show, not making it to France in Still significant helped. numbers mm -hmm. until late in 1917. It was the British and French who had been doing all of the fighting up until then and had battered the Germans by the time the US entered the fray. In the Second World War, things were much the same, with American troops not arriving in theatre until very late in the war. While they fought largely rearguard actions in North Africa and Italy, by the time they landed in force in France in June 1944, the Germans were already reeling from the massive Soviet juggernaut that was rolling over them from the east. In fact, over 80% of all German casualties in World War II came on the Eastern Front. While it was the US that was chiefly responsible for defeating Japan in the Pacific, it was the Soviet Union that did most of the heavy lifting in Europe. So I really hope you there found you that go. video interesting. Let's know what you thought mm. about that. Some random ones in there, some I honestly yeah. didn't know. No, didn't, I know. didn't know enough on there. Um, but there you go. We're not going to 100 take his word, but we want to see your yep. comments in the comments below. Smash the like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. Watch the video. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.